Maximum exposure. Begin destruction sequence now. Cameraman comes face to face with certain death. And it kind of looks like a truck. A biker suddenly becomes a rag doll. So much torque, so little time. Gotta save your life. On a clear day, you can see a crash forever. Jack and Jill went up the hill and came back down hard. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Ah, oh, it's just some dude. A car that can stop on a dime. Not that he'd want to. Hey, it's as easy as riding a bike. Hmm, maybe not. And the strict definition of the words, crash and burn. It's all hits, all the time, on our greatest hits. We call this show Greatest Hits. And a cameraman's about to get his greatest hit. Sydney, Australia. Five and a half ton trucks, and they're careening around a track like go-karts. Takes real skill to handle a big rig, and this guy don't got none. The cameraman hangs in there. Hey, you ready for your close-up? Well, I knew it was going to be close, but uh, there was nowhere to go, so I just held the shot, and uh, when the glass from the windscreen started hitting me, I ducked. You know we got to see that again. This time, frame by frame. Gary's eye to eye with the driver, who's trying to regain control. Doesn't work. This wall is the only thing between Gary and dead Gary. Gary's so tough, he shoots the very next race. Well, it's not the first time, and being a cameraman probably won't be the last. Damage scorecard, Gary zero. Driver bruises. Truck, total. If this ain't a greatest hit, we ain't Max X. How did he end up like a rag doll? Andy Mecklau's a super bike racer from Austria. Hockenheim Racetrack, Germany. The course here at Hockenheim, heading into that first long sweeping right hand. These guys average 120 miles an hour on the bikes. Into first place to the mark in second, Schmidt in third, Brian Morris. And about 100 miles an hour when they're flying off them. Rob Udo Mark, Andy McLeod, a massive impact with the bales. He spun out like a rag doll onto the course, unconscious. The riders quickly raising their arms. Let's check out another angle. Andy loses it in a turn, and he hits the hay hard. Hey, let's count the spins. One, two, three, and a half. He's out on the track. But Andy pulls a Lazarus. Amazingly uninjured and staggers to safety. Seeing Andy Mekka, one of his main championship challengers, regain consciousness and rush instinctively to the side of the course. But all he gets are a few bruises. In fact, he's feeling pretty good about himself. My body is perfect. I stayed two swim months last year after the big crash in the hospital. But everything is yeah, it's here and it's good. Hell, Andy will rule the track once again. It is his destiny. Dudes on water can have greatest hits, too. All right, here he goes. Jerry Davis takes off on his boat. Doesn't take too long for this. The boat breaks apart at over 100 miles an hour. And that's how fast Jerry hits the water. Gentlemen, Jerry Davis in the war party. 
the motor goes flying into the crowd. Well, nice security. We need you down to the uh, mishap area, please. Security. Jerry's floating like a carp in a pond after you toss in an M80. Yeah. I'm silent, bro! He's in bad shape. They've got to get him to a hospital fast. Spectators, we will need you to move out of that area. Give us plenty of room to work with him. Move way back, please. They chopper him out, and he lives to tell about his very own greatest hit. On the way down, or the way out of the boat, I remember landing on the back of my shoulders, and I felt a real sharp pain across my shoulders. And apparently, that's when I broke my neck in three places. But Jerry Davis in the war party. Jerry messed up his eye and his right arm, too. The run was a qualifying run, and the water was kind of choppy, but that wasn't a factor. It just apparently just had too much horsepower for the boat at that time and went in a crazy crash mode. It happened so fast, it's just unreal. It was kind of weird laying in the hospital bed watching that crash on video. Just then the boat flying up in through the air, come up in the crowd and the motor flying through the air and all the people running. I just thankful that nobody on the bank got hurt. Getting hurt hasn't stopped Jerry. Never be 100% again, but I still race. And just couldn't wait to get back to the race boat again, because that's part of my life, racing. Jerry's gotten a little safer. Now he only races boats with enclosed cockpits. We join this greatest hit in progress. This one's Max Extacular. Here's how it happens. Melbourne, Australia. Calder Park Raceway, known as the Thunderdome. And driver Graham O'Brien is Mad Max. Stock cars hit 150 miles an hour. Sometimes they hit each other. Watch these three cars. This guy tries to shoot through an opening. He pushes the second car into O'Brien's car. Check it out from another angle. And here we go. And then it gets flippin' wild. Let's count the flips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Rescue dudes expect the worst. It takes ten minutes to get O'Brien out. But he ends up with only a black eye. Which brings us to a Max X musical interlude. Coming up on Max X. There's nothing like the sound of twisting metal. Train versus truck. Train wins. Find out what happens when dudes collide. A guy who really should have asked for directions. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a flying thing that don't. Highway to hell. Exit to headache. And you won't see these women on Oprah, or The View, or Lifetime. If that ain't enough headbanging for you, stick around for our Max X list. It's our greatest hits of greatest hits. Max X, we play for keeps. We're back on Max X. You don't have to be in a greatest hit to feel it. Women, be careful who you marry or you might wind up here. Watching your husbands do something dumb like this. Spanky Spangler's a stuntman. He and his buddy Randy have big plans. Crash their cars together at 50 miles an hour. They plan this for three years. But it takes just seconds. Medics and other guys swarm the cars to check on Spanky and Randy. 
They're okay. Spanking Randy like it so much, they want to do it again. And they're looking good. But they upped the stakes a year later. Now they're going to go 55 miles an hour. A whole five miles an hour faster. Woo, whippee, five miles an hour. They're off. Are Spanky and Randy all right? The wives are anxious. Or maybe they're just embarrassed. Once again, Spanky and Randy are okay. And the wives are thinking, why couldn't we have just married serial killers? Those folks used to enjoy four-wheeling, but not after their greatest hit. Stephen Goodwin! These people may not be geniuses, but they have fun. They're Max X kind of folks. Just check out them sweet mullets. Okay, excitement is mounting. We're getting ready to go. Hey, cool. They all convoy out to Moab, Utah for some four-wheeling. You think this road looks bad? Check this out. It's the lion's back. Got your narrow ridge, your sharp incline, and your wicked drop-offs on each side. It's your basic Death Wish mountain. Why would they want to go down it? Because they're Max X people. It's Tina Hewitt's first time driving down the lion's back, that is. She and her boyfriend, Sean, are in trouble from the word down. Oh, God. You guys move, Brandon. Oh, You're right. Come on, come get on. back. Oh, come on. Just as nasty from camera B. Look at this guy coming down. Oh my gosh. He's lost his brakes, it looks like. They normally come down quite slowly, and as I was looking through the camera lens, I noticed that this particular blazer was picking up speed. And I realized that something was wrong. I saw it bouncing in the air quite a bit. It was frightening and I just kind of froze. I just heard the crash and then went down to check on the people and the blazer was upside down. People crowd around trying to help. As guys with mullets look on. Couple's pretty banged up, but they make it out okay. I think they're very fortunate. And they kept a cool head while it was all happening. She kept it in the middle. And if you saw the drop-offs on both sides, they would scare you. He's lost his face, it looks Well, cool. unlike most city folk, at least they can say they actually use their SUV off-road. When this train hits this fuel tanker, it's gonna be nasty. Max X deeply regrets that the train missed the tanker, which would have caused an enormous fireball from which you would have derived much viewing enjoyment. After all, this show's called Greatest Hits. We promise that all future trains on this show will hit some damn thing. Like this one. Now, the truck driver claims he didn't see the train. Well, he sees it now. The train weighs thousands of tons, and it's a mile long. Ain't no way it's stopping on a dime. It's stopping on a semi. The train plows the truck 75 feet along the tracks. The 
driver makes it out okay. Okay, note to self. Look out for trains. Don't want to be on Greatest Hits. This dude's 73 years old. And he's finally gonna get his Greatest Hit. Ken Wallace is a stuntman. This thing is a gyroplane. Things are going pretty well. He tries a loop-de-loop. The engine dies. That ground comes up real fast. Look at it again. The rear propeller stops. Now when it hits, the gyro thing somersaults like a drunk gymnast. See how Wallace is almost thrown out? The guy dashes to the scene to help. But Wallace is okay. The engine suddenly spluttered and coughed and stopped. All I could do was try and land it in the long grass and rough ground underneath. And as soon as it touched the ground, it did a sharp somersault and ended up upside down. <laughs> as far as I was concerned, I was just annoyed that I'd, I'd wrecked the aircraft. Hey, but it's worth it, because he waited 73 years to be on Greatest Hits. Max X, we're hitting it hard. Speedboat flips out. While driving at high speeds, avoid sudden stops. Catching a bus the hard way. Okay, who's the wise guy who put the wall there? What goes up must come down. If you're insane for pain, take a look at our Max X list of greatest hits. It's Tough Love on Maximum Exposure. Straight up. Bad guys get their greatest hits, too. This is from L.A. This guy tried to run over a cop with his motorcycle. Now he's running the freeways at 120 miles an hour. After 40 minutes of trying to shake the cops, he takes the exit to... A Greatest Hit. Oh, that hurts! But not so much we can't look at it again. The bad guy gets instant payback. For his greatest hit, he only got a broken wrist. Oh yeah, and a year in prison. I am the back if you're looking for a greatest hit, chances are real good you'll see one at a car race. Car number 19, Gary Stewart, moving to the outside. Hagerstown, Maryland. The driver's jockey for position. Keep your eye on yellow car number five. It taps orange car number 41. Doesn't look like much, but it sure screws up number 41. The car gets vaporized. From another angle. After the love tap, he loses control and... It doesn't look good for the driver, Jack Bland. That car went from car to junk real fast. If you look real close, you can see Jack trapped in the middle of that mess. And he's plenty alive. Seems 
to be taking all this pretty well. He's going to the hospital all right, but he's only got a broken leg. Jack keeps on racing. Now there's a guy who didn't let his greatest hit bring him down. This here's a Formula One sprint boat race in Florida. These guys take big time chances if it means a shot at winning. going at it. Jim McKay and Guido Capolini. Capolini tries to slide ahead by getting between McKay and an orange pylon. Bad idea. They flip. Their boats are toast. Here's another angle. Capolini tries to squeeze through, but ends up totaling both boats. Both of them are trapped in their harnesses underwater. Capolini gets free. He's not happy. But McKay is still trapped in his cockpit, upside down. He's probably thinking, how much would it suck to drown in a foot of water? Rescuers try to push the boat over, but it's too heavy. Finally, it takes seven of them to push it over so McKay can get out. Either dude gets hurt real bad. But like Siamese twins, they're forever linked together with their greatest hit. You're hanging with Max X. Coming up, another good reason not to live in England. The United States. Do we make the best damn bombs in the world or what? Drunken co-pilot wonders what that switch does. Whoops, now he knows. Note to sell, falling 20 feet on the pavement really hurts. And if you think you can take it, check out our Max X list of greatest hits. Max X, reality TV with a bite. Welcome back to Maximum Exposure. This is the closest you ever want to get to a greatest hit. This is a test. This is only a test of a plane crash. Edwards Air Force Base, California. This 707 is being flown by remote control. The pilot's a dummy, a crash test dummy. So are the passengers. Multiple cameras focus on the plane. Scientists want to test a new fuel additive that keeps the plane from burning up. Yeah, whatever, we just want to see it crash. Here comes the airplane. Yeah, it's supposed to crash, but not like this. Its left wing hits the ground first. The runway barrier has a metal cutter that's meant to slice off the wings, but it tears into the engine and cuts a fuel line instead. It explodes, whoops. The flames lick into the plane's interior. Them dummies are melting. Testers said that most of the passengers would have survived the crash and the fire. This story got us to thinking. Maybe plane crashes are really bad. Now here's a greatest hit from the Brits. Imagine you're taking the bus to work. 
sitting out on the upper deck reading the newspaper when... Oh, that's some bad driving. Except there are no passengers. Good thing, because half the top deck gets taken out. It's all going according to plan. The British Rail Service designed the whole thing to freak out drivers, so they'd remember how high their vehicles are. The only dude in this bus is the stunt driver. Throughout the United Kingdom all the time, there's so many lorries, coaches, even small transit vans, the little Luton kinds, that are always hitting these bridges without drivers sort of thinking about how high the bridge is or how low the bridge is. Like this guy's not paying attention. Dude, you ain't gonna make it. Here's what it would look like if you were sitting on that upper deck on your commute. Once again, MaxX provides another reason not to go to work. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to be a concrete wall when a jet slams into you? Here in MaxX, we think about it all the time. And now we know. Dudes want to test a wall to see if it's strong enough to protect a nuclear reactor from a plane crash. They hurl an F-4 Phantom jet at the wall at 480 miles an hour. From another angle. Usually they just use computer models. Oh, but this is way more fun. This is cool. The plane goes bye-bye. And the wall wins. Hey, got a plane you don't need? Max X has got the wall. And if you like bombs, and who doesn't, you're gonna love this. It's the GBU-15. Much sweeter than the GBU-14. It packs a video camera which helps guide it to its target. There's the target. We have the target. Ten seconds. This test footage gives you a bomb's eye view. Five seconds. Camera's running. Ready. Ready. Pickle. Bomb gone. The U.S. military used these in the Gulf War. The extra ultra super slow motion shows the last few seconds of this bomb's life. Good luck. And from another angle. From behind the target, check out how the bomb rips the wall a new hole. That explodes an instant later. Ask the US military. They'll tell you that's a greatest hit. It only hurts when you watch Max X. Next, it's their first day without training wheels. Tragedy. A sweet mullet gets wet. The hard way. A guy needs training wheels for his brain. And if you want more skull knocking, check out our Max X list of greatest hits. Max X. Talking smack and backing it up. You're back with maximum exposure. Bike, stairs, dude, no helmet. Oh yeah, greatest hits coming up. Chris Toth is going out to get a six pack of pain. He's gonna ride down the stair railing on his bike. I'm ready. First try? Nope, he takes it in the back. Second try? Uh-uh. Smart guy would quit by now. The bike's taking a beaten till. Third try. The bike goes flying. 
Chris is hurt. His friends don't exactly rush to his aid. We were all in shock because when he landed, he was silent for like five seconds or so. We thought he was dead. And then he started moving and groaning. Then we knew he was all right. You're all right. You ain't paralyzed, dude. Your legs are moving. You're fine. Yeah, Chris, you ain't paralyzed. Your legs are moving. But let's take another look in slow motion. Dude takes a major header. He chills at the hospital with a broken hand, broken wrist, and fractured vertebrae. This is a small setback for Chris. Yeah, just a little, you know. I'll be back in action. No time. Why, Chris? Why? In the process, I didn't get the rear end of my bike up on the handrail good enough and it made it so it dropped down and I lost my balance and my weight was transferred over the edge of the rail and I fell down, landed on my back down in the rocks. Chris loves to feel the pain. He wants to do it again. I figure if I'm gonna die doing what I love to do, it's gonna happen. You only live once, why not enjoy it? Max X question, why not not do it? Looks like it's all fun and games, but some dude's gonna get his greatest hit. These guys are doing some parasailing in Ontario, Canada. They use an SUV to help the chute catch air. Most of them are rookies, except Dave Bonello. He's almost kind of like an expert. There was about eight guys with me, and there was only two of us that actually had experience going up on the parasail, but normally, you don't really need any experience. It, the parasail just takes you up. One thing you gotta remember, keep that black stripe on the chute pointed up. That way the chute will keep going up. Now if it points down, you're going down. Dave goes up. He's the experienced dude and gets cocky. Look, he can do this. He wants to get higher, so he lets out more line but now he's above the trees where there's way more wind. A sudden blast of wind flips the chute. The black strip points down. Now you remember what that means. That's right, uh-oh. His homies don't realize how bad he hit. But he ain't getting up. Once I started heading for the ground, um, I wasn't sure how hard I was going to hit. I'm thinking, am I just going to get hurt? Am I going to break my legs? Am I going to break my back? I just held on and hoped for the best. Dave hit hard, but his only injury? He had to wear a neck brace for 11 days. Nothing like getting a greatest hit because you were showing off. these women are about to have their greatest hits. 21 cyclists in the heat of battle. Up for grabs, the Australian Female Biking Championship. Feels a bit crowded, isn't it? Well, not for long. There's a massive wipeout. Ah, there goes the crowd. In a split second, more than half the cyclists are knocked out of the race. Let's see what caused this 11 bike pileup. Check out the cyclist in fourth place. She clips the third place bike, knocking her off balance. She goes down, and from here on in, it's a crash-a-thon. Bikes and bodies splattered across the track. Here's another look at the body count left behind. There's the initial crash. The track is turned into a human obstacle course. Watch what happens to this rider right here. She gets hammered in the head by a bike. Amazingly, there are no broken bones or serious injuries. Just a lot of sore losers. And a whole mess of greatest hits. Yeah, I know, we've shown you mullets before. But this is a grade A bitchin' Max X mullet. Yellow Lake, Wisconsin. We don't want to know why they call it yellow. This is called snowmobile water skip racing.
take a snowmobile, get up to speed on land, then try to skip across the water to the other side. It doesn't always work. These folks don't care too much about stuff like supervision or safety. Now it's Rodney's turn. He showboats a little. His mullet's looking good. Until... Bam! At 50 miles an hour. I was starting from the shore going out. There was like a lot of snowbills coming straight in, skipping into shore. So I was standing on my snowmobile. I was watching out at the water. And when I seen a break in the snowbills coming in, I skipped out and I was curving around a point and me and another guy had met at the point and I went over the top of him. The other guy had a helmet. Rodney only had a mullet. Tragically, it got all wet. While Rodney's in the water, another dude skips right over him. Rodney survives the crash. I knew it was dangerous before I did it, but just try to be careful. That's about all you can do. And look both ways before you drive across a lake. No pain, no gain. Hey, this is Maximum Exposure. Next up, you've got our Max X list. Our greatest hits of greatest hits. Max X is in the house. Our greatest hits of greatest hits. It's the Max X list. Coming in at number three. Two things are gonna happen to this guy, Mark Atkinson. He's gonna have his greatest hit, and he's gonna win the race. It's the drag boat finals in Marble Falls, Texas. The fans wanna see some speed. These boats can blow down the quarter mile track at 200 miles an hour. Whoa, crank it up! Mark is looking good, good, good. Uh-oh. He's airborne at 198 miles an hour. Hey, check out this angle. The boat's flipping out. Rescue dudes do their thing. Mark's inside that enclosed capsule. If I didn't have a capsule and, and I entered the water with my body, I'm sure I would have ripped off body parts and been seriously damaged. Back on shore, Mark hears it from the crowd. He looks okay, but they take him to the hospital to be sure. Now back to the race. Now the rule is, if you cross the finish line first, you win. So Mark may be in a world of hurt, but his capsule does cross the line first. But winning isn't everything, especially if you gotta get yourself a new boat. Number two on our Max X list of greatest hits. A group greatest hit. Australia, the Forbes Harness Racing Club. A special race for women drivers only. They're trotting their way around the track. A horse goes down. It takes the other drivers down too. Except for one. She keeps on trotting, along with a riderless horse. People run out to help the fallen drivers. Certainly looks like a battlefield. Never in all my time I've seen a fall like that one. Here's what happens. This horse takes a dive. It's a tangled mess of horses and women. She's a problem, horses and drivers everywhere. And what's left? There's not very much. There's nothing left. But none of the drivers or the horses get seriously hurt. And, um... The last driver left crosses the finish line while holding the reins of the other horse. She wins the race. And, uh, over the line he goes. 
And the greatest hit of our greatest hits. Number one on our Max X list. The USS Kitty Hawk. War Games. On takeoff, the planes get up to 172 miles an hour in just two seconds. But landing's really tough. 40,000 pounds of jet heading down to a deck that's only two football fields long. The pilot has to hook onto a wire so the plane doesn't slide off the deck. Margin of error? A whole 24 inches. And if that ain't hard enough, they gotta do it at night. Planes have no problem taking off in the darkness. But coming back down's a whole nother thing. Coming up. Just a little low, little power. Coming down. Power, 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 they're able to put out the fire and save the pilot's lives. The pilot who landed in the flames suffers severe burns. Crewmen tell what it was like that night. I saw the F-14 coming in. I saw the wave off lights go on on the fly deck. And I saw the back half of the F-14 hit the back of the ship. One pilot went forward, the other one came back in the landing area and fell in the flames and debris. Get him out of there, get him out of there. He stood up trying to get out of his chute, and immediately he caught on fire. One of the pilots landed right in front of me on fire, so we had to get him put out. It was just uh, hell. But both men are back flying. That's how you handle a greatest hit. Check, 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 check. Shake it off and get back in the sky. Maximum exposure. We're out. It can be one of the most dangerous jobs. It can also be one of the most rewarding. Right along now with the men and women sworn to serve and protect, next on KVOS.